In this tutorial, we're going to take a look at using Adobe After Effects to compress our video. And um, one of the things I would like you to do is just bring in all the different file formats just to see if they all work. But I'm going to just go right to the cars, HDV file. And I'll see it imports, and you, you see that it has the 1440 by 1080, so it's recognizing the exact size that we want. Now, we can drag this into a new comp, and that will make the comp fit the size of this video. And this video right now is using pixel aspect ratio correction, so you'll see if I turn that off, it, it really looks strange when we see an HDV video because it's, it's a really strange pixel aspect ratio. Anyway, um, I've got a couple things that I want to do here first, or, or one of the things I want to do first is cut this composition. So I'm going to go to composition settings and change this to only 15 seconds long. That way we know we're just getting 15 seconds of this video. So I have been able to easily take out what I want. In fact, you know, I can, I can scrub the video however I want to make sure I'm getting the exact 15 seconds that I want. So After Effects, pretty accurate. Now, of course, I can add any effects that I want, any kind of um, color correction or anything else that I want to apply in After Effects, I can totally do. I'm not going to really worry about that, but um, be aware that you've got a plethora of different things. Now we've got a couple different choices um, for the next thing that we do. If I go straight to outputting this video for MPEG, or for DVD, I can go ahead and do Control M to make a movie. And if I go to the lost list, let me go to um, change this to my MPEG2 DVD. It will come up with something maybe. It didn't come up with the, the big screen this time. But I can go ahead and stretch this and change it to the size that I need. The NTSC widescreen. Um, so that's my widescreen setting that I want. Stretch quality is high. I want to do my output for audio. And so this is one of the things that's really kind of nice. With the same file, you can output all the different um, sizes that you need. Now, alternately, you can create a new comp, which is at the size that you want, and drag this file into that comp. But let's go ahead and use the stretch just because it's there, and it travels with your output modules, um, which is kind of cool. Anyway, now that I'm on that DVD, um, MPEG-2. I am going to go to the format options and just check what I have here. For my video, I'm going to take my quality up to 5. I'm going to do CBR 7 megabytes per second. Um, and my pixel aspect ratio is going to be wide screen. Just make sure that that's set. We're going to use the NTSC DV widescreen as our setting. Our stretch quality is high. We're going to do our output for our audio and that is going to be PCM audio and it looks like we've got a nice little setting here. So now with this um, setting what I'd like to do is actually make that a template. So now I can call this MPEG to DVD um, wide. So I know that's the template um, that I need. Now I'm also going to add other output modules. So if I right click on the output module here I can add another one and now I'm going to go to lossless and change it to the next thing that I need. I need FLV, which is the output I need, on to VP6. Um, let's go ahead and use VBR, 1500 kilobytes per second, and leave pretty much everything else the same. Our audio is 128, so that's perfect. Now we're going to stretch this to the size that we need, and we're going to take off that lock aspect ratio. This would be 640 by 360. Let's do OK, and we'll change that into a template, and that will be our FLV 640 by 360. Now in the next one, I'm going to do another output module, and this time I'm going to do, um, I can even start off with the FLV, and the reason why is that's giving me some stretch settings already, which is kind of nice. Because now I can go and change the format to H.264, and it will keep the um, stretch settings just the way they were, which is excellent. Now all I have to do is go to Format Options and change the things I need. I'm going to use, okay, NTSC Standard Square Pixels. Um, let's see, I've got 
CBR it set at 10? I don't think so. VBR 1 pass, so let's do our CBR at 1.5, so I can just type in 1.5. Comes bitrate. My audio is going to be um, 128, so I can indeed change audio settings. And of course, we could add um, audio um, to, we could apply some audio effects if we needed to in here just to tweak the settings of that audio. But it's all pretty manual. And then uh, let's see, that is the FLV, that's the H264 one. So I'm going to go ahead and create a template out of that. This is the H264, 640 by 480. Excellent. So I'm making my templates. And the last one that I'm going to do is output, another output module. I can start off with one of these H264s just because that way it starts off with that setting already. I'm going to, however, go to the format, change it to Windows Media. So let's see what we've got. Our video will be the Windows Media 9 Advanced Profile Constant Quality. We're going to change it to 30 frames a second. Square pixels is what we want. Maximum bit rate. Let's change that to 1.5. That's close enough. Doesn't seem to want to to make it perfect. There we go. Now we got it perfect. I'm gonna take my image quality up to 100. I don't know why. Just check it out. Make sure it's the same as the other ones. Our audio is going to be. Let's see. Whoa! Look at all these different audio choices we get. So that's 80 kilobytes per second. I want the 128. 48 kilohertz stereo AV. So we get a lot more options here somehow for audio, which is kind of interesting. Maybe it's because of the version of audio that we're using. If we use the professional audio, maybe we'll get something different here. So this is the audio professional. I've got 128 kilobytes. And here I want the 48 kilohertz two channel AV CBR. I don't even know which one to use. There are so many different choices. Anyway, we'll click OK. Click OK again. And this is the last one. So, whoops, I need to change this into a template. And this is my WMV 640 by 360. So, um, we've basically been able to make all the different things that we want. I am going to change that name for the MPEG-4 so it's just the way it should be. And this is going to output in the same folder. Um, right now it's going to be saving it oh, in the test patterns folder because I didn't choose where I was going to be saving it to. And you should make sure that you are saving it into the correct folder. So I'm going to, right now it's everything for me is saving in this one folder called test patterns. So I'll just save it to the new folder real quick. Just so I know where everything is being saved to. And one of the reasons that, um, whoops, desktop. One of the reasons this is saving in a funky folder is that I never saved my project. So I would definitely say that you want to go ahead and save your project before you go on. And I would like you to save this um, so that you can submit it later. So um, you can call this templates or compression templates um, because that these are some templates that you've just made that you can reuse later. And I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here and compress this, and then we'll take a look at them when it's done.